Hey everyone, the Asian Dad here. Today we're going to do the in-depth review of this Dell Precision 5540. Now, this is a 15-inch mobile workstation. It was released mid-2019. I'll first like to say thank you to the Dell ANZ team to make this review possible. Now, I have created an unboxing and first impression of this computer, and you'll actually see most of the specs there, as well as just the touch and feel of the computer itself. So be sure to check that video i'll put the link in the description below for you to check that out and i'll just do a quick summary of that here now so and i'll put it up right there so pretty much this computer can go anywhere between an i5 to a xeon and for the ram you can go from 8 gigs all the way to 64 gigs and if it's a xeon of course 32 gigs as that's ecc ram there now for hard drive wise you're looking at about two terabytes of ssd now it can house a second hard drive in there which is a side hard drive or more about that later in the later part of this video and it does have discrete graphics which is nvidia quadro t1000 or the t2000 i've been asked if this computer can handle games what this computer can be specced up with it can definitely handle games but it was not designed or aimed at that market what this computer was designed for was more for the professional high-end data intensive applications so more like cad works um, so the people are more than likely looking for these computers are either engineers drafters evaluators sound engineers video editors people do heavy data analysis especially in the medicine field just like my sponsors infinity path now these guys are a pathology company they are the very first laboratory to be linked to my health record in australia and they have this crazy fast 24 hour rapid turnaround time and they will have this very unique e-career tracking system and they also do gp alerts by sms's so that's really nice there now they also have these really nice color coded reports for easier reading and they also do bulk billing for medicare card holders and they also have a no gap for privately insured patients as well now these guys have over 98 years of collective experience in medicine so they're pretty trustworthy there so be sure to check out the link i'll put a link in the description below so you can check them out but be sure to check them out there let's have a look at the port starting on the left hand side with audio combo jack we've got the thunderbolt usb-c hdmi 2.0b now 2.0b means it can do 4k at 60 hertz without any Chrome or subsampling, which is fantastic. And we've got the USB 3.1 and we've got the barrel for the power. Looking on the left hand side here, we have a security port here. We've got the battery indicator, which you can just press and tells you the battery there, which is great. And then we've got the, another USB 3.1. Now this one is power always on as well. And then we've got the full size SD card reader, which is really nice there. Now they have a 720p webcam and it's hidden right above the little slot here, which is nicely little hidden there. And I like to also mention, especially a highlight about the trackpad. I love this trackpad. It is very nice, smooth finish to it. It's like a glass, just like the MacBooks. And that's one of the things I miss about going to Windows. The Macs have a beautiful trackpad and this is wonderful. It feels like, definitely, if I made it bigger, it would be just like the Mac. I wouldn't know the difference, but that is a great trackpad. Probably the best trackpad I've actually played with or used for a Windows-based computer. So definitely, I love the trackpad on this. The keys, they're fantastic. They're very nice as well. They're very individual based. They have a fair bit of travel as well too, so it's definitely a good uh, keyboard there. Uh, I have no complaints about the keyboard at all. So let's have a look at the screen. Now the version that Dell has given me is a full HD non-touch version and it pretty much goes up to 400 nits of brightness. Now the 4K version is 500 nits of brightness. I've been doing a fair bit of video editing on it and I really do wish I actually had the 4K to play with. I'm loving it and I do find it's been nice to have the 4K. So if you're a video editor, try actually upgrade yourself to the 4K one. It makes it a little easier for video editing, just for the workspaces as well too. So definitely good there. The screen I have here is the full HD non-touch version. So there are actually 10 increments to the brightness of the screen and 
do take note of this current one. This will tell you the luminance of the screen itself. So there are actually 10 increments. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we can see that the max out brightness, it is 409. So that equates to 409 nits of brightness. Now we're color calibrating the built-in screen with the Spider 3 Pro. Now I've had this device for many years and it's been pretty trustworthy on that one there. The calibration process has finished. So this is what it looks like out of factory. And this is what it looks like after the calibration. Before, after, out of factory, after calibration. Before, after, and you definitely can see that out of factory it's got a little bit more greener tinge to it and a little bit more cooler and after the calibration it's actually put a lot more magenta and it's warmed up a fair bit as well too so definitely you see a difference between the calibration and non-calibrated screen there now you find this test useful put a comment below love to hear your thoughts if this was useful to you or not so when i test that the coverage of the color gamut for this full HD screen there. I managed to get for Adobe RGB, I got 68.5% coverage there. Now for the sRGB, I managed to get 95.9% .9 there for, and that was just testing using my X-Rite i1. Now if your work requires accurate colors, definitely look into getting a hardware color calibrator. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the color profile that I created off this computer to you guys. I'll put in a link in the description below. Now, be wary, that is running off my ambient light, but at least that gives you a nice starting point for those there. So if you enjoy that, give me a like as well. So let's talk about the speakers. Now, there are two speakers on this computer. It is located on the bottom end of the computer and they're at the front, so one and two. And when I did the sound test of loudness, it measured at 86.8 decibels. So it's decent enough loud, but as for sound quality, this is where I was a little disappointed at my, I love this computer, but this is its kryptonite, is its sound. It's pretty average. I was expecting to have really decent sound, especially the price you pay for this computer. So. I find this is probably its weakest point is its sound from these speakers. I just think that if Dell makes another version to try and upgrade the sound of this, uh, especially for the price tag they're asking for this computer, they definitely need to have some better sound quality. Um, the space is pretty average. It does okay at high end, does still distort. Um, I don't say it's any flash and that's what I'm saying. That's probably only part of this computer I don't like is its speakers. Now it does come with 130 watt power adapter in there and you can also charge the Precision 5540 using the Thunderbolt as well too. So that's pretty good. So you've got two options to actually charge this computer. So let's look at the battery life of this computer. So there are three modes I tested this computer in. So there is performance, better battery life, and also battery saving mode. So in performance mode, I actually did a stress test in that mode. So basically that was CPU, GPU, RAM, and hard drive all running at 100%. And I only managed to make it one and a half hours out of the performance mode there for the battery life. Now that's running every component at its crazy maximum and plus the fan going like insanely mad as well too. But when I was doing video encoding, which was more than likely just pretty much only about a few commands with the CPU running at 100%, I was getting about two and a half hours. So for battery life for performance mode, looking between one and a half to two and a half hours there for this computer here. Now for better battery, you're looking at nine and a half hours there is what I got. And for the battery saving mode, I got 13 and a half hours. Now with the performance and 
better battery life, I did have the screen brightness at 50%, whereas with the battery saving mode, I had it at probably around about 10%. The starting weight of the Precision 5540 is 1.8 kilos. So this version I've got here is the i9 with the full HD screen and it's got a 9 cell battery in there and it's currently weighing at 1.95 kilos. So that's pretty much close to it and the power adapter is 439 grams. So when I did the stress test and performance test of this computer, I did take note of the temperatures and noise level of this computer. So when the, I was doing the stress test, we're making this computer as hot as it can possibly be. I actually did take note where the actual heat was. So most of the hot areas that you'll find is actually along the first two rows. So that's where the function keys are and the number of keys are. So in between there is its hottest part. That's also where the vents are sitting behind the hinge there as well too. So it all goes about right there. And as you'll see when I open it up, the actual CPU and GPU are located around about where the T and I keys are anyway. So that's the hottest area of this computer. The palm area is actually very decent. You can't not feel much of the heat at all. So it's, you can actually quite happily work on that for a while. Same with all the keys with your letter keys. You can still work off it while this is running extremely hot. Definitely don't have it on a lap for sure. So when the computer was running 100% level, I put it my food for Monta, that's all I got there, uh, around where the F8 key, because that's near about the center, and it measured at 50.2 degrees Celsius, and the decibel meter read at 43 decibels, uh, pretty much around about 15 centimeters away. So that's actually very decent in terms of noise level, and it was quite a more of a low hum pitch sound, more rather than a high whine there. So very, very well done there. Now, the ambient temperature was 24 degrees Celsius when I actually did the measurement. So when I had the computer running at between 40 to 60% unionization, I had the food thermometer measured at 47 degrees Celsius. And again, my decibel reader read at 43 decibels. And when I had the computer running in between 5 to 15 percent utilization. My food thermometer read at 36.5 degrees Celsius and the noise level was 35 decibels. So it's actually a very quiet computer when it's just running operationally. So I've got the i9 version here. I'm just doing the test for the thermal forwarding and as you can see it's actually doing a decent test here. So there is some sort of thermal folding here, but that's kind of expected for a notebook. But it's actually doing a decent job keeping the speed quite high. Now this is testing the both CPU, RAM, hard drive and graphics all at the exact same time. So the computers should be running decently hot at its maximum at the moment. Now I'm just stressing out only the processor there, which is the CPU and we're just checking for thermal folding. It is thermal folded a little bit, but it's actually doing a very decent job. And I find also the keyboard very touchable. You don't really feel much of the heat there. So put a comment below if you find this very useful. Love to hear about from you. I'd like to bring your attention to the Dell Precision Optimizer. Now this is included in Dell Precision Computers. And what it is, is an optimization software for these professional softwares that you may run on these computers here. As you can see, there are actually some fairly powerful software here. I've got a few already enabled at the moment because they're the ones that I use, but what they are is, if I just click on one of them to show you what it does, is they should do CPU optimization, GPU optimization, as well as power optimization. And this is also to deal with your workflow as well too. So these are absolutely fantastic and you'll find these will increase your performance on these computers here. Let's look inside the Precision 5540. So it's a matter of turning around its back, take off the 10 screws here and then there's another two more screws behind the flap so make sure you take those ones off and then it's pretty easy to remove the back cover. Now I'm only gonna do the very first layer of this because that's where most of the upgradeability is. So we've got the Wi-Fi card on the bottom right hand corner. We've got the SSD, which is the PC 
IE M.2 format here. It's made of held in by one screw there. They've got two sold dim slots where you can actually upgrade, which is fantastic for the RAM. And then you have the battery itself. So the battery is um, usually plugged in. I've just unplugged it to make it easy for us for, or to take this battery off. And the battery is held in by a few screws here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws there. So you just remove those screws and you should be able to take the battery off. Now this is a nine cell battery I've got here, which is rated at 97 watt hours. So removing the battery pretty much opens up what is sitting underneath it. So you can actually see there's a slot here, uh, sorry, a space here for a two and a half inch hard drive here. Uh, and I can see there's, that would plug into here. So the two and a half inch hard drive requires you to have a free cell battery instead. Free cell battery will only sit around about up to this sort of length here. Uh, the free cell battery is 56 watt hour batteries. And that's pretty much all there is. Uh, I think it's the CPU and the GPU are sitting right down underneath here. And of course the heat sink pipes and the vents here for the fan. Now the Precision 5540 is fantastically prepared up with its Dell WD19TB dock. Now I had this working quite happily with three external monitors with this Precision 5540 and it runs extremely quiet even when it's plugged into this dock here driving three screens. So definitely worth looking into if you are uh, looking for a workstation sort of style having this there, definitely recommend this. Now I have done a review of this WD19TB dock. I'll put a link in the description below, so be sure to check that one out if you're interested. Now I don't try to do too much performance tests on computers that I review. Um, I do have benchmark, I'll put one up there for this computer that if you want to have check that out. But I do try to actually do more review of what it touches and feel and what it's like to actually own this computer. Now if you find that useful, Put a comment below, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that and if there's anything that you'd like to have tested out as well for my future videos. Having spent some time on this computer, I'm going to have to say I really love this computer. Uh, it is quite light for the amount of crazy power this thing has and it does gave me a bit of an eye opening how fast this computer was. Um, the performance of it is just insane and especially it's, even though it's a 15 inch computer, it is, very light for a 15 inch computer and it's got a bit of a 14 inch footprint on this computer as well too and i really really love this trackpad really love it um definitely it's one of my favorite points of this computer i though if i actually purchase this i would go definitely for a 4k version of the screen um, but how much i love this computer out of all the computers i reviewed this year in 2019 this is nearly probably what i'll have to say the best one i've reviewed so far if you find this video informative or enjoyed it, give it a like. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. I do try to upload a new video every Tuesday and Fridays. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.